Hi everyone and welcome to August 2022's Galagadi Wildlife Photographic Competition. This is the August 2022 Wildlife Photographic Competition's uh, judgment uh, and critique. And um, we've received the most uh, entries for August 2022 and it's quite natural because everyone thought that August was the close of the competition. We've added another month in September because um, we, we shifted the final weekend or the weekend of the prize giving um, towards uh, 11th of November and not the 4th of October as we initially said. And it's all about availability at the lodge um, um, and business levels and so on. So, and it gives us a bit more time. And uh, those guys that feel inspired and that uh, I think there's a couple of guys that, that know that they, they could win it. Um, you normally feel and the, uh, the guys that are good, they, they know they're good. So, so if you feel that you got a chance, make sure that you got those days of the 11th, 12th and 13th open because you might just pack your bags and hit towards the dunes to collect your prize. I say once again that uh, one of the fastest ways to learn is to actually get your, your photos to be compared with other photographers or other photos and to get genuine feedback, not Facebook feedback where everything is wonderful and exceptional. I maintain that um, critique of your images, every image that, you, that you've captured is probably the best and the fastest way to actually learn because, because um, it cuts through all the riffraff and all the niceties and so on. And if you're a person that that is quite critical in yourself, you know that's what what I've been. I've never been. I've never been happy. The first time I pressed the shutter of a of a camera, uh, and, and the warthog that I remember is this beautiful beast, and the fellow comes out as just a warthog. Uh, you know, there's, there's there's always been something, and but the more you do it, the more you become a little bit happier with your stuff. But but every day, still, there's you know, there's always something wrong with your image. So when we critique the image like that, it's it's all just uh, um, uh, um, to to actually help you um, to make you better. And and one of my advantages um, that I've got is is what I do is is I I go through the images um, from from an intuitive point of view. Um, I open photographic galleries and by doing a photographic gallery you're exposing yourself and you're opening yourself much more than a photo competition because once you open a photo gallery you must select images to go onto the wall and, and what is the criteria you use now? You can't just put on the wall that you think is good um, or should you put on the on the wall that you think other people uh, think is good, which is also not good? So that's a, a learning school that you need to um, um, go through. But there's nothing that gets close to that. When I put my first images on the wall, I had the opportunity to look at the, the reaction of everyone that opens or enters the, the gallery, what he does or how he reacts um, both verbally and body language when he sees your first or your entrance piece and and um, and then he goes around how much time he spends or she spends at every image when they go back where they go back to what makes them what triggers them to buy an image now that's the ultimate thing and and I'd like to approach this competition from that point of view I've over the years picked up experience of what images sell um, although there's a, it's a very wide field and it's and it's very difficult to predict and to lay down, but there is some some indications, and 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 it's not too far away from foundational compositions, uh, rules of composition, and so on. But yeah, I, when I give you advice on that, uh, uh, rest assured that it's it's not just a club or something because you know I think it's a good photo. I, I would I'd like to say that the images that that I select are images that at some stage. If it is mounted correctly and the right frame and the right mediums are selected, would be or could be a seller at some stage in your life. I say once again, um, what medium it's printed on and displayed because that's 50%. The image is one, but the way that you display it, the, the, the medium that you put it on and, and the framing, that's, that's crucial to an image in it, in it. And where you put that image... Um, um, you know, in relation to other stuff in the room and so on. So I, I just want to emphasize that I use 
um, my experience from, from selling images and what images trigger emotional or emotions in, in people. And, and I'll, I'll select my wildlife images accordingly. So if I, if I go into the first image, I'm just going to go into the first image and just address um, something, something that people underestimate. If you take this image of the Agama of, of Brevere, you just put Brevere in the mail. Um, if you look at this image, um, the first thing we do with the wildlife photography is we got, we've got a subject because the subjects are, are you know, that's, that's what we photograph. We chase the subjects. But, but what I chased more than subjects as I grew as a wildlife photographer, as I grew, uh, I chased um, backgrounds because backgrounds makes the subject look better. Uh, what you consider in your background is, is everything. So if you take this image, for instance, and this Agama, and you look at, and you start looking at the detail of the green, the green um, um, scales and the blue scales and the turquoise scales and the orange scales, and um, uh, it is, it is fantastic. You look at this head, but if you look at this image, you look at the black area um, on the, on the, at the back of, of the Agama, you can see that the silhouette is quite clear in certain places where it is dark, but where there's light, it sort of intrudes. In other words, there's no notional space behind the eye over here. Over here, he's quite clear. You can see the outline, but there's a bit of a problem, and that is distraction. So in post-process, it is not difficult to remove that um, blob, 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 and that one over there, and to make it a general dark area, because remember, if that is dark, the whole head would also be in the outline of, of this. And if you edit and you remove this shadow and put light behind this, you cut it out and halo it, the, uh, then this line also stands out. So you can see the outline. Now, I'm talking about background because I see that 90% of the time, people do not consider where they park. They do, but 95% um, uh, it, it doesn't really consider. Over here, it's not just the background. It is looking at, at, at the arrangement of your background. If you just parked a little bit more to the right-hand side so that this whole, that is out of the way, and number one, it, it would have been a better position. And also, um, if you went right down from here and shot it up, if you just wanted the dark. So over here to consider is not the subject. You look at the subject and then make sure that you don't chase that. So the subject is one, as soon as you see the subject, what you do is, is you, 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 you look at the top, the bottom, and, and to get the smoothest background or the background that actually complements um, your, your, your subject the most. Um, so here, you park it just a feet further to the front. You would have uh, isolated that uh, dark area over there, and um, it it would have it would have looked better. But this is go back to the subject. I think this subject is a, is a sup, is a super subject. I mean, of course, in post process you can cut that out and you can put it in a different background if you want to be creative and so on. But look, if you enlarge this this iconic. Um, reptile of, of the Kalahari. I mean, it, it brings some color into the desert, um, you know, um, before and after the, the blooming season. So, super subject, and that's something that I think there's, there's going to be some awesome photos still taken of this, of the Agama. I love this very close up of just the head. We see a lot of the tail and so on. I, I don't know how big this is. Once again, remember that we need to blow up the images, guys. It's very important that if you enter, that this image should at least be, be blown to an A2 size. If it's A1, one even better, because when you enlarge the subjects, you, especially this, you get into the, into the world of this, of this boiki. So I just want to use that as an example. Subject, super, um, background, we could have we could have worked on it and so i'm just going to use that one image in the membership video i can i'm going to do more of this detailed critique so we're going to talk about about um, notional space about light on back or you know how to get the subject to stand out we're going to talk about leading lines and shapes 
um, and not intruding in the framework of the images. So in the members, member video, I'm going to go into a super tutorial um, that that um, is going to dissect everything we look for. Now, if you if we look at this um, or critique this or select this, you, you don't really go out and say, oh, here's the tick box, you know, background is good, uh, there's um, a rhythm, there is a main direction, and there's alternative direction, and there's our shapes, and there's leading lines. That's not what you do. It comes intuitive. Um, so, so you can just look at it, and I'll tell you which one complies with all of that. But if you go down and dissect it, it, you normally find out that it's exactly the things that we talk about. So in the members video, I'm going to go into right detail and I'm going to boost the video because it's going to be a master class on, on selecting wildlife images. So what I've done this is, um, is I, I went into the first round um, and I couldn't pick six images and I couldn't pick eight images and I couldn't pick ten images. Um, I had to really... Take the images that basically comply with all the rules of composition and all of these things that we talk about that makes an image a good image and put them in a folder and this is it. So I just want to say that any guy or girl that and everything in between the guy and girl and above, below and behind and in front or whatever you like to call yourself, this images that is in this um, category or this folder over here are all images that are extremely good wildlife photos. And if this is not a winner, any guy that or girl that's name is on this thing, believe me, they are just waiting for something to happen, something magical to happen. Um, what's the difference between this and what you see in the, in the coffee table book, let's say Anas's book? The difference is the fact that Anas gets, he had the opportunity to take photos before and after the normal guy could take it. So besides the fact that he's an exceptional photographer, he had that opportunity to, to get images with backgrounds um, that, that the, the, um, by far the average of the majority guys uh, uh, didn't get. Also, it's his business. So he, when he stays in, in, in Rupert's Lodge, he gets that last five minutes that he goes into the lodge and and um, and the rest of the cars need to be out of the gate in the South African side. So there are benefits and you structure your business around the strengths, like for instance that. And and everyone, I say again, everyone that's on this, in this folder, are absolute people that, that you can pride yourself. And all that must happen is you must go back and back and back and back. That's all Walter photography is. I, I bet you that within five years, maybe 10 years is a bit long, five years, a lot of these guys that will keep on going at serious will will get an exceptional image and not just win this competition, but maybe win a, a geographic competition or something like that. So so I I don't know whether I should go in on this, but here are the, the people, if you look from the top, it's Bryce Treble that, that, um, that since he's entered just puts in absolute professional images. Carlos Tonder is a, is a as a place winner from the previous year, Carl, uh, he's black and white lion. He's 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 um, ended another uh, two lines of year with a cup that is you know there's a there's a color um, image like this. This is absolutely superb. I mean I'm going to go into the detail of that. And he's got the black and white image. Both of these images are exceptional images that can win a competition. And and the nice thing about the fact that you can do a, a black and white and a color is you can just cover the spectrum. Some people, fine art images are more sort of sepia or, or dew toned and so on, and they can make for fine art um, because it, you know, it's, it's open for interpretation. Um, but I mean, if you, if, you, if you look at that, it's just absolutely amazing. And I think I was there. I think I, uh, Carl took this image because in the photographic competition, the award-winning weekend, we went into a drive, we went in, and we drove right into this back of line that were lying in the roads. I'm, I'm sure it's this one, because he was standing a bit behind me. I, I, didn't, I did take some pictures, but I think this was that. And and if you look at this image, it's it stands out. Look at there's no distraction on the top right. It's like a vignette, 
a natural vignette that the shade of the camel thorn tree made at, at the back. Soft light because it's in the shade, but the things that, that are lit up are lit up. So I want to touch on some of them. So Carl Stander, then Emil Vessels. Um, let's enter another line image. Um, Gerard Tron has, has done a, a lot of close-ups. I say once again, I hope that these images can print at least A2. And if it prints an A1, these images stand out. We look at that computer and you cannot look at it on Facebook, um, ladies and gentlemen. You've got you to gotta enlarge an image to see why you've done it. And I, I, I fail to understand how someone can can enter or get to a stage where they can enter competition images like that and they don't print and enlarge the images and display it or sell it. It is a sin because when you enlarge this you can see the quality of, of these images. Um, yeah, I just want to make this you can see in, in the eye of the owl on the right hand side you can see the hammer of Gerard. I'm sure it's Achno Hammer is um, SJ Cruiser. Another super black and white from Gerard. I, I just love this. Um, there's a lot to say about the background of this image. Only Fisser has done this male line. If you look at the if you look at the line, you know, when a line looks like that and you know line, you know that there's he's he sees something. You know, he, he, a difference between a line that sees something, um, and as soon as he sees something. Um, that's what a line looks like. When a line lies under a tree and he's just sleeping, that's not what a line looks like. This year, he's standing up, he's raised above the the rest of the surface, the level of the photographer is is below the line. You've got the three thorn shrubs just in front of him and around him with the grass and the sky. I mean, a super, super image. If this image can print to uh, a naught, it is a seller. What can we say about the landscape of Hugh Mitchler? Um, fantastic. Look how Huey searched and searched until he found no distraction in the foreground. Um, you know, try and find another space like that. And look at how the grass has been used for the composition. Um, you know, grass is not often used. I've seen it in April. And, and I'm glad because uh, Huey used the grasses as leading lines towards the tree over there and then the whole of the scene. Another one of, of Yui um, and a beautiful uh, black and white rendition of the color one that he's entered before. Um, look at Jan van Sel waited I think too late and, and Jan basically um, put in some serious images here and, and um, I mean Jan is uh, can do a coffee table if if all of his images looks like this as well. If you look at that, it's probably the biggest opportunity of photos is in this grass with all the rodents that has exploded after the good rains and all the small reptiles and so on. And that's one of the most rewarding things to drive next to the secretary birds, especially when they stay on a plane with a vehicle and you take photos with them and, and video them and just look at the character and, and the body language and how the male and the female hunt together, the 45 degrees towards the back and the front, how the one chases the, the rodents out and the one at the back can grab them and, and, and then they reverse, the one goes to the front. It's absolutely fantastic to watch these things. Um, and the one image that, that talks to me is this image of Jan. Um, and the, I can write a a whole chapter about this image. All I can say is this, this is, um, in the members video I'll talk about the detail about this image, but this here is a glorious image, that's what it is. There's so much that is correct in this image. To the untrained eye it looks like a cheetah standing there, but I can promise you this is a seller. Gene Ellis is put in this typical Kalari um, landscape. I, I do love it. In post-processing you can still get some get creative, but it's 
simple, common, and that if you look at this image, you are in the Kilari. Jurgen's Potgieter has done has done this. Um, it's it's a, it's 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 super. It's, it, he's eliminated the fact that background is distracting or foreground is distracting um, from the line. Line. It's just the line. And look how the sun just shines in that eye and it stands out in the center of this dark area. So it's a super portrait and something that will look very good on a wall. Jürgen's put in this one. I think I think you will go far to get a. A cheetah image, but now we've had the previous one that Jan did. Plus this one is super. Um, once again, I've got so much to say about about this, and this is an iconic Kalahari image. Mark, Mark has captured a bit different. He's got this bird already leading line and the leading um, um, direction is uh, up 45 degrees towards there. Pigeon has already been. Been grabbed, you can see the pigeon's head and nothing distracting it in the background. And a super image. We normally have the, the contact with all the feathers and so on. That's just another uh, rendition. Mary Jane Sisto from America visited us, and you know, being the the exceptional photographer that she's that she is, she captured some um, you know something different. The summer, typical Kilari, the, the fruit. Um, the water of the Kalari, the thing that sustains the animals and, 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 and people um, in the very dry years. Another perfect portrait um, and another favorite of mine, the life-giving force or fruit in the desert and the rodents that so exploded now and has also kick-started the whole of the, the, the cycle um, up to the top, like the raptors and the and the um, reptiles and and all that that live on them, are super to go down and look at the small life in the Kilari. Sonia Kruen, ach Niels Ferreira, sorry Niels Ferreira, look at that, look at that holding of the line, um, looking straight out. He's seeing something. That's what they do as well when they go over a dune and they, and they hunt. They go over like that. And they look at far. And you can see that guy looks at another line or he's looking at something. That it probably looks like female. Nils has done another one. He's done three. And I must tell you, that's why I put all three here because it's very difficult to say that the one stands out from the other. This one here has got a better profile. Um, that one's profile. It's completely side on. And look at the... The C curves that the main's doing over here, that's very, it's a beautiful um, silhouette uh, against that white. So look at what we're saying. There's nothing distracting the profile of this line. In this instance, it's in the grass where it actually belongs because that's where the line are successful when they hunt is from tall grass like that that looks just like the main. So this is, this is good. Um, Niels has done this one. Yeah, you know. Um, I would, it would be very difficult, and then he's done this one. This would be very difficult to pick. This, this is a, if this is full size, and this is done on a diasec, in a wall, it's, it's a piece that, 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 that can sell anywhere. So, I've put in all three of Niels Ferreira, um, because it's, you know, some people take a lifetime to get images like it. Nikki. Our prize winner last year is something different in this, and, and uh, once again, um, it's one of the the things you know what makes your image exceptional, what makes it stand out, and what's different about your image. This one is what's different about your image. I could take a a um, graduate filter and just put it on the same line over there, or straight horizontal with uh, a tobacco. Um, filter that could just ease off that bright light on top um, uh, uh, but it stands out it's a different image Peter um, uh, it's it's one of those images that that it, it takes a good photographer to to keep the subject small like that and the environment in as well um, I'm busy writing or doing a program on, on photographers that do that. Most of us, and that's one of my problems as well, we want to go in too close 
and in the Kalahari, the exception is that the background and the environment that the animals are in is just as beautiful as the subjects itself. So, yeah. And uh, if you want to look at what a lion portrait should look like, it's not a female, a male, it's a, it's a female, but this is, this is a, the perfect portrait. Look at that eye contact, look at the level of the photographer, look at the black and white works 100% with it, and it's just absolute unique. Look at the, 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 the perfect face. Uh, you can see this is a massive lioness. Sonia Kroon has done this beautiful coffee table book image. Um, and I say so because look at the colors she gets out of it. Um, we'll get the stories of all of these as, as well soon. I would like to do some interviews with, with Sonia as a, as a regular. And Sonia is a, as a good ph photographer and she's waiting for, for some excep exceptional image. Not that she hasn't got. Another one that that's stands out different and it's typical. Normally... Also, when you do the wildlife photography, it says, you know, what is the statement? You know, what is, what is the statement you make about the place that you're in, um, that you're capturing your subject? And this is a one like the one with the lilac-breasted roller. Um, it's very small in the picture, and it's the total picture. Here, this camel thorn is an absolute icon of, of the Khalakhadi, uh, with the dead branches lying down at the bottom here, and this one very old. And then there's grasses and it's almost monotone and so on. You know, it's the angle of the line is not good because because it's it's uh, it's from the back. It's normally not something that you take. You'd like that just to go 45 degrees in. If it was coming in, it would be a, a, a much better picture. Uh, look, a look at Sonia's portrait and then this. Listen, I can I can go crazy about this image. Um, in the members video, I'll talk about all of the seeds. Look at the the tumbleweed that forms little shapes and patterns, as if it's if it's like bokeh on the lens, and all of that. Probably one of the best images. If this meerkat had a tinkle in the eye, there, it's all it needs. And then Miss Tracy Slavin, which takes the most perfect portraits and gets the most perfect colored hues and saturations in the background and I tell you what if I take a top six portraits of animals that's what you would put in a book to identify the species with but in the other hand if you look into the face of this cheetah with all of this definition on the hair and you just start staring at that face and you stare that cheetah in the eye it's it opens up a, a total new world so there's something that she captures in the eye. I mean, you look at look at this jackal's eye. Besides the fact that um, you've composed with color. So all of these images, um, if I have to decide on which ones to take, it, it'll be very difficult because, you know, I'll take the one half today and the other half tomorrow. But in any case, all of these images are really good enough, at least, to sell. Uh, or to display anywhere. Uh, um, I'm very proud that, that this is the level, and and I can see I can see growth. And what I'd ultimately like is to see that that some of the guys that support us, you know, actually go through and and, and achieve achieve bigger things. Once again, I want to just remind you that once you once your images have been selected into the finals and you have exposed your image before this competition to a magazine or to a competition, you know, we wouldn't consider it. And, and this is the reason, you know, we put in a lot of money to produce this and to run this. Around 300,000 Rand it costs to actually put everything together for this competition. And, and, and so we want to reward it, but the only thing I'd like is to get some media um, for our platforms, for uh, creating the community of the photographers that, that love the Khalakhadi. Um, and, and, and once we've published it and, and made it public who the winner is, of course you can do with it what you want. So, so yeah, we'd like, we'd like some loyalty with regards to that and, and to try and, uh, and not post it. If you enter it in the competition and you think it's, gonna, it's in the finals uh, or a finalist of the month, please don't share it elsewhere. Just hold on tight and maybe you can get that prize money 
before you share it on, on other platforms. That's um, it's a condition if you want to be, receive a prize, but I also just, I, for, for the loyal entries like this, you know, I would also um, do my best to actually promote and give mileage to this, uh, to the photographers that, that are the the um, the regular entrance to answer. So that's that's it for now. I'm going to do some detailed critiquing in the members video, but um, uh, and uh, um, uh, uh, September has done half or, or I've received half of September's entries. As soon as possible after the end of uh, September, uh, we'll select a big group of images and then I'll head over to Orms and um, try and get one of the Orms guys to actually sit uh, with me and and do the final six for 2022. Keep on shooting.